Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, the talk will be in English and then we'll, there will be a subsequent workshop. So, um, hello and, and welcome to uh, the talk uh, about uh, Espressive open source community and, and Rust language. And I am really delighted to like, say a big thank you to open source community, which make it possible to uh, get the Rust language working with uh, ESPs. So, I will, I will start with this address. So if you have a notebook, please type wokui.com slash rust or wokwi.com slash rust and you can play immediately with rust on uh, with uh, ESP32 simulator. And this is a really amazing thing. So if you never, uh, never worked with ESP chips before, or Rust before. This can give you like really quick start. So let me open this nice thing. For example, here is the, the example of the Rust uh, code, uh, so-called hello world in embedded world, the blinky. Uh, you need to blink a LED. Uh, that's how uh, guys in embedded world are doing hello world. Basically, you need a resistor and LED. And I will hit just the run and yeah, board started and you can see it's flashing. So this is, this is really nice. Um, and Uri Shaket, uh, who is behind this uh, simulator, did like really, really amazing job. Uh, and this is a really quick starter, how to get you up and running with a Rust. Wokwi supports also other things. So if you are into Arduino, MicroPython, CircuitPython, Wokwi is a good starter and you can test the things even without our hardware. That's really nice. And now back to the presentation. So let me give you a context uh, about like what is this ESP about. You may heard something, you uh, may play with this thing like ESP8266, which made Espressive kind of legendary. And still this, we are selling this chip. It was the, the first chip with uh, Wi-Fi uh, and uh, originally, it was planned for some other purpose, but the uh, uh, community just took it and uh, improved it so much that it was used in many languages, uh, and so including Arduino, C, uh, Mark, MicroPython, and so on. Uh, so then uh, after this chip, uh, we introduced uh, some other chips, more powerful, more cores, uh, for example, ESP32, two cores based, and all of this stuff was based on Extensa architecture. You may know uh, Intel architecture or ARM architecture uh, from common PCs and computers, uh, and Extensa is an architecture uh, for embedded devices. And uh, you as a or we as, as a company uh, had to choose which architecture we will use because uh, it, uh, it's also related to royalties that you need to pay from every chip that you make um, to, to the owner of the architecture. So we choose the Extensa and that make it possible to make the chips uh, in a reasonable price so you can use it in IoT projects. Uh, and recently, uh, also there's a new architecture going on. It, it's not like a new architecture, but there's a lot of movement in this architecture. It's a RISC-V. And uh, we have also chips with uh, RISC-V. That's the last one, ESP32C3. Uh, and probably uh, more chips on this architecture in the future will be there. So right now, we have two architectures, Extensa and RISC-V. And this is important to understand because it will determine how we build Rust on top of it. Uh, also, it's good to mention that you can use multitude of uh, languages and uh, tooling. Uh, if you like Arduino, feel free to use ESP chips uh, with Arduino. Uh, also, uh, the industry uh, standard C uh, is very common. In that case, they are using ESP IDF as kind of operating system which sits on top of uh, RTOS, uh, real-time operating system. Then you can choose uh, MicroPython or CircuitPython. Uh, they are similar. Um, and uh, these Pythons basically uh, are just an application that is on top of ESP IDF that is compiled for the chip. And you can basically just uh, put there uh, Python commands and it will execute. There is MicroPython. Not everything is working there like with a real big Python, but it's there. Uh, also, it, it's good to mention Toit. Uh, it's very popular uh, these days uh, in the 
uh, embedded world uh, because uh, the guys uh, who wrote it originally were working on V8 engine for Google Chrome. Uh, they left uh, Google and they created this new language with the same idea uh, of having stable, uh, stable running runtime that you can run on top of ESPs. And also uh, C Sharp guys, hey, uh, we, there is also a community who created a runtime that you can uh, take assemblies from Visual Studio and push it to the chip and yeah, get C Sharp running there. Uh, the footprint is slightly big, yeah, but for some application it makes sense. Okay, so that's, that's the context. So let me tell you about the early days of Rust support, how it all began. There's this post from Scott Mabin, Rust on ESP32. And I consider it something like Linus Torvald's email when he first started writing about Linux. Uh, and uh, Scott is writing there that, hey, I got an uh, LLVM extensor fork and I was able to get the Rust C running. So it was able to generate extensor assembly uh, for extensor architecture. And uh, then I had to put the project aside because I had to finish final year at the university. And this was kind of starter for us and for community to start looking into the Rust. And no long, uh, and Scott also wrote, wrote some other uh, topics later on. And there, is, uh, there was this interesting talk, uh, the guy from Red Hat, <laughs> uh, Citron, uh, made a nice presentation about how he was able to get uh, Rust running on uh, ESP32. So uh, even Red Hat was able to uh, get the Rust uh, running uh, quicker than, than Espresso <laughs> uh, on ESP32. So thank you very much also for this contribution uh, because this was uh, really, really important uh, for getting uh, Rust uh, like high level, like uh, professional support there. Uh, on the ESP chips. Also, there is uh, this ESP RS organization where we are trying to, to put, all, put all the things. It was not founded by uh, Expressive, it was founded by a um, community member, the Scott, Scott Mabin that I showed you, uh, who later on joined us. And here we can find all the good stuff that we are doing and uh, yeah, also some experimental stuff. Okay, so, uh, and some challenges uh, in those early days. Uh, <laughs> it was quite interesting to, to get the Rust running there. Yeah? Uh, the, the setup was extremely complex. You need to build LLVM for your uh, architecture, and then this LLVM should also target the extensor architecture. So it's, it's relatively hard, um, but yeah, uh, if, if you have sufficient weeks <laughs> of, of free time, you can get LLVM up and running. And then on top of that, you need to build a Rust uh, toolchain because uh, extensor as an architecture is not uh, in the mainstream. Uh, so um, yeah, you need to build your own toolchain. And also the toolchain was not available for all platforms. Uh, Espressive uh, is trying to support users on all operating systems. Yeah? It doesn't matter Windows, Linux, Macs, uh, or uh, if it's on M1. Yeah, uh, users should have the toolchain ready and uh, get it working. So uh, yeah, in, in those early days, there was uh, no like toolchain pre-built and ready, and just few things were working, even though we were able to do some blinking of LED, it doesn't mean that you can use full-blown uh, Rust with everything. So, and, and we, we are thinking, hey, let, let's make it better, okay? We see that Rust makes sense in embedded world, uh, we are seeing uh, more and more uh, things going on, and let's, uh, let's uh, try to help. Uh, so, we, uh, created also the Rust community meeting. The first one was in uh, 2021. And you can find us uh, at uh, github.com uh, slash ESP RS Rust discussions. So let me show you uh, where you can find our community meetings. Uh, here you can see also the history, uh, how the project was evolving. It's every two weeks uh, full of updates. What was done, what was community trying to contribute. You can see even the design of the Rust board, which is interesting to mention, uh, because with this project, we even try to design a board and make it as an open hardware, which is not very common uh, in uh, this uh, industry. And uh, 
we created uh, not only language, uh, but also a board. It's with the, populated with the C3 chip. Um, basically, uh, you can rust, uh, run Rust on uh, any of our chips. And we, uh, but with this, this was like a tribute to Rust. So we created this board and name it after the Rust. And uh, you can find this board online. Uh, grab the KiKet and you can design your own hardware. Yeah? Uh, and, and it was really nice because uh, the day when we published it, the next day, uh, somebody took the board and manufactured it and put it on the Twitter, hey, I, I got the, the working version of the board. So that was really nice. OK. So uh, this is the community meeting. And uh, we had a lot of good and great contributions. For example, I, commit, uh, I made a commit of code. And the other day, uh, the next day, uh, somebody just rewrote completely my contribution and said, hey, this, this is better. I said, oh, that, that, that's something. It's really nice. Um, and the, the really important thing is that we are also trying to uh, make uh, the tool chain uh, and the build system uh, available. So we are building everything uh, outside. Uh, so we are using uh, GitHub uh, and uh, uh, the runners um, and uh, with, with the custom runners there. So you can find all the codes uh, at the Rust build repo, including the installers. So yeah. uh, that's it. OK. And one interesting thing is, OK, we know there are two architectures, Extensa, and uh, there is this RISC-V architecture. And to make things even more complex, uh, we have also this uh, battle in the Rust world is STD versus no STD. STD uh, is when you got all the libraries, all the, all the fancy stuff, when you can get the print command, format command, you got a string command, you got a memory allocators and everything are ready and you are happy and you can use it versus no STD world where there is like nothing. Right? This is also called so, no, so called no uh, like bare metal. Um, and, and in this case, you have nothing. You have no operating system. You have no APIs. Yeah? Uh, but you can write your own event loops, your own panic handlers, and you can really shrink the binary as much as it's possible, which is very cool. Um, the last week, uh, we were in uh, Linz uh, at attending the Rust Linz conference. And there was this very nice talk uh, where they got this bare metal running on Raspberry Pi. It was called Raspberry Pi. Uh, and it was really nice to see also bare metal uh, Rust running uh, with raspberries. So uh, that, that's two di these two worlds, and you have to choose. You might choose rich features, big binaries, or no features and small binaries. OK. Uh, we are also trying to uh, make it accessible for people. So you can find uh, Ferro system guys who are known in the Rust community uh, for many Rust-related projects. Uh, together with them, we designed this uh, um, training. Uh, there is also the beginner training. And uh, here is also the link, expressivetrainings.ferrosystems.com, uh, uh, where you can find the materials that uh, they open sourced. So even the training material is open source. You can find it on GitHub. And if you are new to, to embedded uh, development, um, this is really recommended training. There is all the nice stuff that you can uh, do with uh, Rust and technologies. OK. So now let's do some show. And let me show you again the, the walkway that I mentioned before. And let's do small deep dive here. So. Uh, Wokwi is, is really like very interesting project uh, because the author uh, took uh, the specification, the PDF from Extensa architecture. He ran it through some grep and set. From this uh, grep and set, uh, <laughs> he uh, get a specification that he translated uh, through the TypeScript uh, into the simulator of, uh, of the chip. And uh, yeah, within some time, he was able to simulate ESP32 relatively closely. Uh, and he was then able also to get the RISC-V running uh, in the web browser uh, with the C3. And it is really amazing, this thing. And, and you can design your own stuff here. So I was showing you, for example, uh, this uh, Blinky. Uh, we were able to get also the SPI with the display running. Uh, there are this ESP clock. 
uh, ILE display with C3, so you can have all the combination of chips and displays uh, and, and see, see it uh, here. So let me show you. Uh, so here is the code as we know it. And in this diagram, JSON, there's basically the description of the schematics uh, that you can see on the right side. Pretty nice, so we can also edit the, the layout. So you have the layout, the code, and everything here. So pretty amazing project, this walkway. Okay. So, um, but you may say uh, that that's nice. Um, that's that's a good starter. Uh, I can start working with uh, ESP chips and uh, Rust immediately. But I have something bigger, and Walkway maybe does not support my crates that I need to download. Uh, and in that case, we were trying to make it simpler for users to to start working with. Uh, 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 with the, the environment, uh, because installing all the tool chains, it can be a little bit finicky, and uh, yeah, you may spend uh, about like two days trying to get the tool chain running on the Windows and still get some problems, and then uh, the same thing on Mac, uh, where Apple push new upgrade and everything is breaking. OpenSSL is not uh, able to to do any establish any connection. Yeah, so, so many funny things. So we tried, hey, we, we got this cloud world where we have these containers, uh, where is the, the prepared Linux, prepared everything, everything is ready. Uh, and, and we are looking at the solutions that are out there. Uh, and there is this nice Gitpod IO. Uh, these guys give you basically for free the, the virtual machine uh, for some hours that, that you can use uh, during the month. And um, you may start development. So let me show how it looks like. So, for example, here is this project. Yeah, you can see ILE display here, ESP Rust board here, and here is this nice button. I open in Gitpod. When I click it, I will get this UI, slightly bigger. It looks like Visual Studio Code. You can connect Visual Studio Code remotely to it using the remote containers. And yeah, uh, and at the left side you can see cloned project. So uh, it, it just clones the project from the GitHub, and I can run commands here because I got here the Linux uh, server, and uh, I already pre-built it, so we do not need to to wait here a long time. And I just click this URL, and it will automatically connect this build uh, that was done uh, in the Git pod uh, to a simulator, and voila. I got running simulation here. So even though I don't have the hardware with me, I don't have even the computer which is able to build things, I can still use the web browser. This is really nice. So that's about the Gitpod.io and, and how you can play with the Rust quickly. So no need to install anything because yeah, Rust tool chains can be tricky. Okay. So that's Gitpod. And you may say, okay, uh, what about our other providers? Uh, luckily enough, uh, there are other providers uh, of the similar solution. For example, GitHub opened their code spaces. So if your organization has support uh, for the code spaces, you can use the, the same setup there. So just create a code space. GitHub will give you the, uh, the virtual machine and you can run the stuff there. Uh, th this is really nice. And uh, you may say, okay, but I, I don't like GitHub. I don't want my code to live somewhere in the cloud. I want everything uh, locally. Uh, and we were doing research also here with the community, and we were able to get um, our tool chains, ESP IDF, um, everything running with uh, dev containers using the Visual Studio Code and uh, uh, Docker or the Podman or Lima. And it was working there. The, this is really nice. Uh, because in that case, you can have the, the same environment guaranteed on your uh, local environment. So, uh, very simple thing, you just clone the project, hit the reopen in container, it will pull the container to your local machine and you can uh, enjoy the rest without need to worry whether uh, you got correct version of uh, Ubuntu and uh, correct version of uh, OpenSSL and uh, everything, uh, whether it's working. 
Okay, so you may be thinking, fine, that, that's nice. Uh, and the question is how to start with a Rust project. Um, just uh, copying some code from outside. Yeah, so, so we created these templates. This is really nice. Um, and, and you can use these templates uh, to create your own project. Uh, and uh, you can find them at our GitHub. So let's see the repositories here and find for temp search for template. So uh, here you can find ESP template, uh, that's for bare metal. And there is also ESP IDF template, that's, that's uh, when you'd like to use the whole ESP IDF uh, and uh, you'd like to use all the functionality uh, that is there. So um, that's the mix with the C, uh, C world. And let's focus on this ESP template. Ah, let, let, let me explain one thing because people are very confused when they uh, encounter this uh, ESPRS organization. There are repos with this ESP IDF prefix and just with ESP prefix. And there seems to be like two times the, the same thing. Uh, the important stuff is that ESP IDF template is for the time when you are working with uh, ESP IDF, so you got this big C library underneath it. Uh, the thing without the ESP IDF, just with ESP, is the bare metal. Yeah, bare metal is experimental, so get ready for uh, interesting situations. ESP IDF is like relatively rock solid, uh, and uh, it's good for uh, starting uh, like bigger projects. Okay, so how to start? Uh, let's go for the template. I will click here, blah, 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 scroll here, copy this command, grab the terminal, zoom the terminal. One more time. Okay, cargo generate. And now I should give the name of the project, uh, for example, open out. Uh, now I uh, need to choose which uh, target I would like to target. Uh, you can choose ESP32, C3, S2, S3. Uh, this is an important question because each of them has different tool chains slightly. Uh, so let's go for ESP32 uh, in this case. Uh, you are asked whether you would like to use, for example, allocrate, so let's say no in this case. And here's the question whether you would like to pre-generate and pre-populate the project so it can work with the containers, git pod and uh, github code spaces. Uh, we will, it will just put there some files, so let's say true. And yeah, we got the project running. And let's go into the project. And you can use command like cargo build release. And voila, I, I got the thing building for, uh, for ESP32. And now it's, it's building. So pretty standard stuff. If you uh, know the Rust, this is the, the common workflow that uh, developers can use uh, with the desktop development. The same workflow is possible with uh, ESP chips. Uh, and if you'd like to uh, flash it, you just uh, type here cargo ESP flash release and then uh, the binary will be flashed uh, to your uh, to the connected chip so very easy uh, to start and uh, I'm putting here the, the release here and this, this is important uh, because uh, <laughs> um, if, if you are building um, binaries uh, with uh, rust uh, and it's by default debug uh, it will be really huge so the, the flash time will go, go up. Uh, so we recommend to use the, the release whenever possible uh, to speed up the flashing uh, and uh, the binaries are smaller. So yeah, uh, cargo generate can create uh, the skeleton of the project for you. Maybe I can also show it in the uh, Visual Studio code. It looks like uh, the, the same stuff that we know from development. Yeah, uh, we got here the cargo toml. Cargo toml is the file 
which describes uh, dependencies and some other stuff. So you can see that we are using so-called ESP32 HAL. Uh, that's an important project because it allows you to uh, interface uh, with the hardware. Uh, so your code does not need to be too hardware specific. You can switch the holes, for example, for ESP32 S2 or S3 and still be able to run the similar code there. Uh, then the source code is here in the main.rs. We are doing here some, let's say, <laughs> boot, uh, bootstrapping magic. Um, yeah. uh, so here what you can see uh, is that we are trying to get access to the peripherals, uh, because in embedded world, uh, if you would like to do anything, you need to have access to peripherals. Um, for example, turn on and turn off the LED. So for that, we need uh, peripherals. We got some system, we got some clocks. So this is the bare metal example. And then we have here some like meta files, like dev containers. Uh, if you'd like to utilize this thing, you can uh, also like remove this file. If you don't need it uh, and don't want anybody to work with your project in this way with the containers, yeah, you can have just the main and cargo tomo. One small recommendation, uh, slightly controversial, but we recommend in the first uh, iterations or maybe for the CI also commit the cargo lock file. Uh, which is locking uh, the versions of uh, all dependencies because uh, the Rust is moving a lot uh, and sometimes even the minor change uh, can like bring the entire system down. Um, we already seen several crates being updated and their changes were like breaking the other stuff. Uh, so this is very important to, to remember. Also watch for this cargo lock because very, when you run cargo run for the first time it's being generated uh, and then you need to run cargo update to update this file to the latest version. Uh, and you may end up chasing a ghost. Hey, why it's working on my machine, but it's not working on your machine. The most common reason, hey, you don't have the same cargo log file. Your dependency is slightly newer uh, and it's, it's broken. The nice thing about the Rust uh, and these dependencies is that you can use uh, dependencies like here, ESP backtrace, for example, that you can find on uh, crates.io. Yeah. For example, ESP32 hall. Yeah, we are here. Yeah, I, I just need to copy this thing and, and put it into my cargo tomo. And the, the nice thing about uh, this cargo tomo is that you can point it even to, to your GitHub. So I can say here the git and link to the repo, the branch, and the cargo tomo will automatically pull uh, the dependency from GitHub. So this is really cute. We can see the similar feature also in other uh, build systems, but for cargo, this is really, really nice. Okay, so some links where to begin with the Rust. Uh, we are trying to update uh, Rust on ESP book that you can find at uh, esprs.github.io slash book. Um, and feel free to contribute. We welcome any contributions. Uh, then we are also trying to maintain this awesome Rust, uh, like many projects has awesome Rust thing, uh, or awesome, awesome repo thing. Uh, we have, there are just some uh, examples because the, the project is relatively new and it's growing. Uh, so if you have any cool project or even simpler project, please uh, just submit the PR and we'll be more than happy to integrate it there. And uh, yeah, how to start working. Also, uh, what people who are not familiar with, with Rust are not aware that Rust has this nice feature of having examples so let's say that I would like to develop uh, something for ESP chip. Uh, let's, then I go to ESP hall and for, for example, ESP32 hall. And here are the examples uh, that can be used. So for example, here is hello RGB, uh, where I'm talking to NeoPixel LEDs. So if I have this strip with colorful LEDs, here is the bare metal implementation of that. Uh, and you can grab the source code from here. 
and we are trying to update this example so the, the hole is always buildable. And uh, if I go a little bit up and see, for example, ESP32C3, I will see the similar structure here. Examples, yeah, basically the same stuff, um, just some dependencies has different name. Uh, some peripherals does not exist or exist there. Yeah, so, so it's uh, tweaked to that uh, specific hardware and you can find the implementation here. So again, uh, ESPRS, ESP Hall or ESP IDF Hall and then uh, search for examples. This is very crucial to, to go for examples uh, there. Otherwise you will spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure out how to do simple thing in Rust. Okay, so that's uh, the key, thing, key things about the Rust and let's uh, have some other inspiration from other projects. And this is not Rust, uh, but this is related to Brno. <laughs> uh, if you may know these guys, Vida Toti, uh, they, this year uh, they had a summer camp for kids and they were using ESP32 there and they uh, made this nice segment clock. Uh, and if you will attend uh, Maker Faire, uh, in Brno the next month uh, we will be there with this hardware so we can see it live um, and uh, this, this one is uh, written using uh, Arduino but just an example of, of nice thing that has been done here in Brno. Um, also guys from clouds know uh, Grafana uh, and there is a Grafana lab in Bratislava and uh, we were also uh, speaking with them uh, because we found their uh, project about the Sordo monitor so if you are baking a bread this is critical and uh, uh, lady who, uh, she, who made this project, uh, they, uh, she, she also uh, made a presentation uh, on the internet, uh, how they did it and how they connected the whole thing to Grafana. Um, so there is a nice uh, example of the library with uh, Arduino. Uh, we don't have the same uh, Rust binding yet, uh, but hopefully uh, we will get soon also the uh, API for Grafana in Rust running. Uh, and, and this is a nice example how you can connect uh, the, the real thing uh, with, the, uh, with the cloud and some analytics. <laughs> and uh, Grafana provides also like uh, 30 day of your data are, are free. And you can use the, the Grafana cloud even for your hobby projects. Uh, some, some other things uh, that we have here and I have here also the, the demo with the, the bare metal uh, is this S3 box. Uh, that uh, there is also the hardware is on GitHub, so you can make a clone of this thing if you'd like. Uh, and, and this hardware is uh, like a screen uh, with uh, ESP32 S3 inside, and uh, it, it's a really nice piece of uh, hardware to start playing with. Okay, uh, people are often asking, hey, you got so many chips, uh, how to like get, how to, how to know what is inside it? <laughs> Uh, and uh, luckily enough, there is uh, this uh, like product selector. So if you happen to like encounter a chip and you don't know uh, what's the configuration, uh, you can search through this list of different configuration and, and find the spec here, see, see what's there. So that's another link that I would like to point out. Uh, yeah, you can see, for example, this one is well, uh, this chip has a 32-bit RISC-V core with a processor at 160 megahertz. It has some ROM and so on, and GPIOs, and one uh, I2C, uh, one, uh, two UARTs, and yeah. So, so this is the product sector that, that you can find, and it can give you a uh, better understanding uh, of what the chip is capable, uh, because it's not like, you got, this is not uh, the same thing like you got the uh, Intel chip with, with, in PC, this has uh, much less capacity. And if you are running Wi-Fi there, uh, it's eating some of the processing power. So it's good to know the limitations of the hardware. So it's like not the same thing as the desktop uh, chips. Okay. Okay, uh, and where you can find us, uh, we are here in uh, Brno, uh, Přizova uh, uh, 3, uh, in, near the uh, main train station. We'll be more than happy to see you there. So if you have an interesting project, uh, please 
shout out and, and say, say hello. Uh, we are also helping students uh, here at uh, VUT at FIT or also in fact we had some project and a diploma thesis where students were using uh, our chips uh, and creating uh, some solutions um, for example with some sensors uh, so you can find uh, many interesting projects there. And you can also meet us at uh, Brno Maker Fair which will be in a month uh, hopefully we will be there uh, with the ESP clocks and uh, we can have a chat about anything related to ESP chips or embedding development. So uh, that's uh, the talk about the, the Rust, the basics, the, the community, uh, some chips. And uh, uh, this, uh, today there will be also the workshop. Uh, so I really uh, invite you to the workshop. We will try to play with the real hardware, uh, flashing real chips. Um, and uh, we will try to uh, get things up and running with Rust. OK, so thank you very much. If there are questions, please ask. Yes, please. Okay, so you mentioned that for flashing from cargo uh, ESP flash, mm -hmm. is it connected to cargo run or cargo embed as well? Uh, yeah, uh, so to, to flash the, the chip, uh, the yes, so the, the question is, uh, okay, uh, how to, to flash the chip? Um, I was showing here a cargo ESP flash uh, command. Uh, you can call also ESP flash. Uh, basically, this is the, the wrapper for cargo ESP uh, flash uh, crate, and uh, it's flashing the, uh, the thing to the real hardware. Uh, you can also use the cargo run, but in that case, you need one special file. So let me show you. Here, this is the magical directory in uh, cargo project, and it can give you a real, real headache to find it, uh, why things are not working. So uh, when you are working with Rust, always check whether you have this dot cargo because on Linux it's hidden <laughs> so we won't even see it, that it's there and this is a critical critical thing here because you can hear here specify also so-called runner so if I type cargo run actually it won't do cargo run it will do the cargo ESP flash uh, and it's like allies. So you can use uh, this small config file to simplify your commands. You can see also uh, dash dash monitor here, which means that we flash the chip and we see what's uh, on STD out from, from this chip. So uh, th this is a small abbreviation. So be aware there is this dot cargo file and uh, if you got it there, you can now type cargo run and basically it will build the thing and run the ESP flash on the background and, and flash uh, it to the, uh, to the real chip. Yes, please. Maybe a question. Uh, can you run the uh, application and the packet over the ESP32 C3 USB connection to the JTAG in uh, Opera CD? Yes, so, so the question is uh, whether we are able to debug uh, um, ESP applications written in Rust. Uh, um, actually, the, the question was about the C3 and the JTAG. Yes, it's possible to do it. Um, it's using um, uh, the debugging process is the same, uh, like uh, if we do it with normal desktop applications. So if the GDB and uh, all the stuff is uh, configured correctly, uh, the debugger should stop on the correct breakpoint. Uh, and uh, also we can see uh, variables uh, and stack, stack trace uh, displayed on the in the debugger. So yes, it's possible and it's even possible to run the debugger with Wokwi. Uh, this is quite of interesting because this Wokwi simulator allow us to debug the things that are really fast because with the chip, you, uh, the chip is ticking with uh, 240 megahertz or something like that. It depends on uh, each hardware. Uh, and, and some things may happen too fast and with the simulator we are able to slow things down and we are able to connect GDB to the Wokwi. So, uh, even with the uh, with the Wokwi and the Gitpod that I was showing, it's possible to, to do the debugging without the real physical hardware. Kind of interesting conf configuration, and we already used it to, to catch some bugs, which was very hard to catch with real hardware. 
So the simulator, we were able to simulate the bug. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. So the question was uh, about the integration with the Natix, uh, and maybe I will add also the, the Zephyr operating system. Uh, you may be aware of these uh, two things. Yeah, so there, here is the, this Apache Natix. Uh, so it's kind of uh, like operating system for embedded uh, world. Um, because if you try to run Linux on ESP chips, you can do it. Uh, somebody already succeeded, but the boot time is more than one minute. Uh, so it's kind of, ah, uh, you can see it's not Raspberry Pi. We can get it running, but uh, okay. It, it's not, not like uh, uh, native and it's uh, not uh, inherently like for that, uh, uh, targeted for, for this hardware. Uh, for that, for, for like if you need your, um, your applications are a little bit more high level and they can leverage the Nothix or Zephyr. Um, it's just kind of operating system where, where you get some standard things that uh, applications developer are using. Uh, you can use this thing. And uh, our uh, development team in uh, Brazil is working on that. So we have some success with that. We are able to run uh, Nothix and uh, some parts of the REST applications there. Uh, we were able also to run uh, the Rust uh, application on one core uh, while having, uh, having it isolated, which is interesting uh, from the um, perspective of, uh, of security, that you can dedicate one core of the chip uh, just to the application. Uh, and the second core was uh, running the operating system. This is uh, in the development, so uh, you need to probably to watch uh, these guys behind uh, Natix uh, or, and, and, uh, and the Zephyr, uh, that's the Brazil team. And they are, they are doing really remarkable stuff, uh, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of uh, answer here. Um, Please uh, follow, follow uh, the, the Nautix team there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have uh, support for uh, uh, control area network and or TWI in your case of in the Rust and some get open and such stuff? Um, so, so the question is, uh, do we have a TVIO and um, uh, whether we have the CAN uh, support there? Um, right now, with, with the bare metal, if we are talking just about the bare metal, the, the things are very early. Uh, so we were able to get the Let's See running. <laughs> uh, and uh, th this is early development there. Uh, so from what the Espressive has uh, like uh, officially is, is what you can see on our repos. And uh, also we welcome our contributions there. So uh, I know that also the community is uh, creating some experiments there. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, feel, feel free to, to ask at the metrics channel that we have. Uh, there is, uh, the development is like every day there is something new. Uh, so we welcome any contributions also there. Okay. so. I think I'm running out of time. So again, thank you very much uh, for uh, being here and listening to, to my talk. Um, the important point is please feel free to try the Wokui as the simulator uh, for any project that you have. Uh, if you have any like feedback on Wokui, we are working with the author authors. We welcome feedback. So you can uh, get up and running with the, the Rust or Arduino, MicroPython, whatever. Uh, and uh, then, uh, in the afternoon, and there will be the workshop where, where we will play with ESPs and try to do some stuff there. Okay. Thank you very much.